And in business, the executive board of the International Monetary Fund has approved $1 billion for Ghana to address the COVID-19 pandemic. The funds will be drawn out under the Rapid Credit Finance Facility, the, the Ministry of Finance has described as false and misleading report by the fact GhanaCheck.com of the Media Foundation for West Africa, suggesting that government has shared different macroeconomic data with Ghanaians and the International Monetary Fund. Now I am joined by Dr. Josh Bamfo of Anderson Tax. Good day, doctor. Good day, Irene. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us on the news. Now, Ghana, Thanks for having me. Certainly. Ghana was one of the first African countries to seek funding from the IMF. We also know that Ghana is an oil producing country. What has played out so far in the country? Yeah, um, clearly Ghana is one of the countries that um, have suffered pretty significantly from COVID, you know, when you compare it to other African countries, with the exception of South Africa in terms of sub Saharan African countries. So the Minister of Finance proactively sought assistance from you know foreign and foreign or financial institutions such as the IMF and um, based on the presentations they made um, Ghana was approved one billion dollars to help with you know um, having some fiscal buffer to basically help deal with the economic challenges as a result of containment measures for curbing the COVID-19 spread um, so basically um, this has been very helpful um, that has then been the only source of support um, we've also gotten some $100 million from World Bank. That is more focused on the public health sector where, you know, it's helped with development of equipment for laboratories, you know, PPEs and so on and so forth. You know, and there's also the African Development Bank, um, $10 billion um, response facility available to member countries that um, Ghana can also tap into. So in all, um, they do have access to all these international funds. And this is very important. And the reason why it's important is the fact that no African government or global government anticipated you know, COVID and its impact on the economy. So definitely it wasn't captured in the budget. So with a budget that already had an expected budget deficit to GDP ratio of 4.7 prior to COVID, now there's expectation that that um, deficit to GDP ratio was going to balloon to about 7.7%. So you really needed to borrow in order to fund that deficit. And uh, for a country that has significant debt um, and challenges, going to the capital markets would have meant high interest rates, which would then worsen you know, their debt challenges. So such support coming from the international financial institutions where you get access to concessional loans at pretty much zero interest rates and some moratorium period is welcoming for such economies that are trying to develop. Now, are there specifications on how the money would be used, that which has been uh, gotten from the IMF? I don't think the, um, this is very different from you know, going to the IMF when you have um, mismanaged your economy and you come out with, they come out with conditionalities, where they make you enter into a program where you are supposed to meet some milestones. Um, there are broad guidance, but I don't think there are any specific guidance. But um, clearly, if you um, listen to the president, um, you know, not the current speech. Um, he had a speech to the nation yesterday, but prior to that, he had um, given clear indications as to how some of these um, funds are going to be invested. You know, apart from the immediate um, COVID, um, you know, response, um, from an investment point of view, it's clear that there's going to be more investment in the healthcare se sector. So he made mention of the fact that, you know, there's going to be a decentralized approach in terms of that investment. So we have 88 districts in Ghana. And the president was very clear that each district was going to get some health healthcare facility. So we do expect investment into 88 healthcare facilities across the nation and, um, and seven regional um, hospitals to serve you know, some sub-regional um, areas. So that is an indication as to how much the, um, where, where the emphasis is going to be. And it looks like the emphasis is going to be on healthcare systems and making sure that we come up to power with you know some of the western um, economies and the minister of finance also mentioned that uh, there were misleading reports on data shared to the imf as being very false now what's your take on this yeah so um if you look at the um, history behind this um basically what had happened was that um the minister of finance had come up with the budgets for 2018 and 2019 and that clearly had some figures for, for some economic parameters 
And as part of the application for this support um, from the IMF in terms of the rapid credit facility, they also had to make some presentations. And it, it came to the knowledge of uh, you know, this particular um, source that you mentioned that there were some discrepancies in terms of some of the data that was presented in the budget for 2018 and 19 compared to that same parameters you know, that were presented to IMF. So that suggested you know, to some people, especially the opposition, that um, government might have presented misleading information in order to get access to this loan. Luckily, we had the um, IMF representative for Ghana, the country director, you know, um, come to um, one of the major um, TV outlets, news file of Joy News, to set a record straight and, and give their clarification. Um, so basically, um, based on his response, there were two key parameters that were, um, that were in question. The one had to do, the first had to do with the fiscal deficit to GDP ratio and the second had to do with the computation of the gross international reserves. So for the first one, which is the um, fiscal deficit to GDP ratio, um, in computing that particular um, rate for um, the budget, the Minister of Finance had made an argument that there were some unanticipated spendings that were made for the financial sector clean out you know, in the form of bailout. And because those were unanticipated and one off, they were treated as extraordinary items and therefore not included in the computation of the fiscal deficit and, and as a, a ratio to GDP. Uh, now that is common accounting um, standards where one-off you know, expenses can be treated as extraordinary items and treated below the line. And that's exactly what they did. However, um, for IMF's purpose, they, be, they were more conservative and felt like this had to be included you know, in that particular computation. And if you include that and you don't treat it as an extraordinary item, then the, def um, you know, the fiscal deficit to GDP ratio number then increases for, from, I think, 4 point something percent to about 7.5 percent or thereabout. So Dr. clearly, Dr. IMF had the full information, but they decided to treat that particular item differently. So it wasn't a case of um, the government trying to mislead. It's a case of the IMF taking a more conservative approach in terms of the treatment of a particular line item in the computation of that particular um, economic parameter. All right, thank a you, similar argument Dr. Can, Josh. Yeah, that's the same for the sake of time, that's reserves. all yeah. we can have for now. But thank you so much for joining us on the news. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Certainly.